Greetings and welcome to the podcast show, Touching People for Heaven, with your host, Preacher John. God bless you, my dear friend. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there will be something here on this show, in this episode, that you're able to use in your life, in the life of your family, and in the lives of your friends, and in the lives of people you haven't met yet. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, are we ready? Let's get started. This is episode number 65, number 65, and is for the Sunday prayer letter dated June 13th, 2021. Sunday, June 13th, 2021. And the title of our show today is called They Saw a Young Man. The title is found in the scripture book, Mark 16. Verse 5, Mark 16, verse 5, and I'll read it to you. It's in the King James Bible. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. All right. Greetings, friend. I am a little nervous today, as I normally am on this show for some reason. Uh, I'm actually recording this on Tuesday morning. (laughs) How about that? Tuesday morning. Uh, it's just been really busy. Saturday, I didn't get started writing my letter till late, late, late in the day. And it was very late by the time I got to bed that night, and I just did not have the energy uh, to do the show. And nor did I have it on Sunday. I thought, well, I'll do it on Sunday. But the weather and the... it just didn't work out. <laughs> it was just too much. And then on Monday, I thought, well, I'll do it on Monday. But once again... Uh, we're having a heat stroke, heat, not heat stroke, a heat wave, I guess you would say. It's not normally in the high 90s in Boulder, um, but it is now. And when you're street preaching and there's not a lot of shade where you are, it really gets to you. So uh, even today, Tuesday, I'm uh, knocking off a couple hours early. I'm actually only going to preach from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Uh, because where I am at, preaching today. I'm actually in a parking lot on the corner, and there is virtually no shade anywhere, and it is extremely hot where I am, and it is 97 degrees here on this day. So I, getting ready to go, I thought, you know, I'm just going to sit right down and uh, record this show and uh, see what happens. So this is what we're doing. The show starts uh from the Sunday prayer letter, which goes out. It did go out Sunday morning, um, and we preach on that Sunday prayer letter, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and those who preach on Saturday use, can use the letter to do their ministry. We all use this letter, and it's full of scriptures that we can all stand in one accord with the verses and, and the message, too, even though it's kind of an unusual message titled, They Saw a Young Man. Uh, how do you preach on that? But what I like about these titles is they are not some flamboyant man-created idea. They are simply the Word of God. The seed is the Word of God. And I sow that seed and scatter it throughout the uh, world, I guess you would say. So I use the Sunday prayer letter as my script, and we'll just jump right in. At the top of the letter, it says, Greetings, friend. What a week it has been. It seems that each day this week had its fill of challenges and problems that required a solution that only the Spirit of God could provide. And you know what? The Holy Ghost showed up every time. What a great joy it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why don't we get the letter started by praying? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, your word is clear and distinct. There are no gray areas, no misunderstandings, and no scripture that goes unanswered. This is clearly the work of your Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for providing to us understanding in the word of truth. Thank you for filling us with power to be a witness and to testify of the wonderful works of God. Amen. Yes, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. The following here is our summary outline of scriptures for this week of preaching. And I'll also make a mention, if you would like, you can watch the street preaching videos that I do each day, six days a week, for this letter. It's on my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash, and then my name, John, J-O-H-N, my last name, Shuck, C, as in C-H, as in Chevrolet, so it's C-H-O-Q-U-E, French name. And I'll be preaching there every day and posting my videos later in the evening or the following morning. Uh, depending on how strong I am. So the June 13th Sunday prayer letter titled, They Saw a Young Man, has six parts, and I'll read them off to you. Part one is on Sunday, Mark 16, verses 5 through 8. Part two is Monday, Mark 16, 15. Part three is Tuesday, Mark 16, 16. Part four is Wednesday, Mark 16, 17 through 18. Part 5 is Thursday, Mark 16, 19. And the last part, number 6, for Friday, Mark 16, 20. And just a side note here, Gospel Evangelist Church uses the King James Bible for all its scripture references. So as we move into a brand new week, we also receive a new series of scriptures with a teaching from the Word of Truth and taught by the Holy Ghost. And that's per Luke 12, 12. And John 14, 26, and Acts 1, 2. Now let me read those to you. Luke 12, 12 says, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And lastly, Acts 1, 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, th through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? So this Sunday prayer looks a lot like it will also have six parts, which I, obviously, <laughs> for the six days of preaching and ministry on the street and in our house churches along with the eventual church assembly on Sunday, hopefully coming soon by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord, <laughs> coming to a town near you, right? <laughs> it looks like uh, I will also be writing this letter in a similar, similar fashion as the previous letter. Uh, what I'm hoping for is a shorter discourse, if the Lord wills. Many times, though, I see by the Spirit so much more than what is being written or even said on this show. This takes much faith to not write more than what the Holy Ghost is desiring me to write. It sort of feels like whenever I'm preaching, I see more of the message than what I am to speak on. This, um, this requires being humble and submitting yourself to the Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will give a choice. You can speak what I show you, or you can not speak what I'm showing you. I realize this is not normal to many Christians, but it is normal to the prophetic ministry, of course, which I live in. You know, one more thing I want to share is that I am nothing. I am only a servant of God, like oh, so many other believers in the body of Christ. Therefore, I always go back into the Word of God and search the Scriptures on your own and my own with the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost. In this way, you will be taught by God and not by a servant. Hallelujah. With all that being said, let's dive into the living water, or probably said, or possibly another way, the Holy Bible. The following will be six parts. Uh, once again, June 13th, Sunday prayer letter titled, They Saw a Young Man. Part 1 is Sunday, Mark 16, Verses 5 through 8, and I'm going to read. So what I'm going to do, let me take a little side note here. I'm going to read the scriptures that's in my letter, and then below the scripture portion is a tiny little one, one or two or three paragraph dialogue or a commentary or just a thought that I had. 
So it's a little different than last week. Last week I had no commentary whatsoever, but apparently here I have a little bit, not too much, and it's not a teaching, it's just a thought that came to me while I was writing the Scripture, and the Holy Ghost had me put it in the letter. So Mark 16, verses 5 through 8 in the King James. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly, and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. So my commentary or my thought is this. The reason why we are looking at these certain scriptures is to explain and clarify who is the he in the verse 15, and he said unto them. That's in verse 15 of Mark 16, which we'll go into a little later. We truly need to know who he, H-E, he is that is giving such an assignment and one that will last for thousands of years. This he better know what they're talking about and have such a supreme authority that will carry out throughout the centuries and centuries and centuries to follow. This is an enormous commission by he. And this is also why I, Preacher John, does not like using the pronouns of he, him, his to the point to the, to point to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's more to say there. I, did, I'm, I didn't put it in the letter, but there's a whole lot more than what meets the eye here when you use the word he, 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 and him, 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 and his, his, his. When you're always using those pronouns to talk about Jesus Christ, I'm just throwing it out there to beware, okay? There's more to what I'm trying to explain, or there's more in the Spirit that is being revealed. It's not being revealed more clearly. But I see what's going on, and many others see what's going on, but many do not see. The vast majority of believers do not see what's going on. So I'm just asking everyone to wake up to what's going on in the Spirit. Back to our letter here. Also, if you've been around me for a while, you'll also notice that I do not put in uppercase these pronouns. Why? Because so many other people capitalize these pronouns, which are not titles. There are two main reasons why. One is these pronouns are not in uppercase in the King James Bible, unless they start a new sentence. The number two is these pronouns that people give as titles to God are the same that Satan is taking to title himself. This is something to think about, my friend, but of course, most don't believe me. That's okay. Let's just worship the Lord thy God. (laughs) Amen. Next part, June 13th, Sunday prayer letter. They saw a young man, part two for Monday, Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the scripture that has the and he said. This is explained in the previous scriptures in this letter, which I just went over. You might want to reread that section or re Think about that section or go to your scriptures and look at Mark 16, verses 5 through 8, and truly understand who this is before proceeding. Amen? I also preached at that, uh, on Monday my YouTube channel. and Look up uh, Monday, uh, J- June, whatever Monday was, uh, the 14th, I think. I think it was the 14th, and there's a uh, 20-minute video Miss Sermon on that same scripture. So let's drop down to the next section, part three, Tuesday, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The commentary or the thought is this. Here in this verse, some believers get a little confused. Some think that if the believer is not baptized, they will be damned. Let me stop for a second 
because that catches people's attentions when I say that to people. So let's go back up into the verse, Mark 16, 16, and reread it one more time. So kind of listen for a second here. It says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Okay? Now next thought in this, sin, in this scripture. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So it's not in the letter here, I don't think. Um, let me read through the letter here, and then I'm going to add another sidebar to this point here. Uh, this is not true. Uh, all that is required is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's a reference to Acts 1631, which says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In the above verse, Jesus is saying that you must believe. The baptized part is by the Holy Ghost, and that's referenced in Matthew 3, 11, Acts 1, 5, Acts 2, 38, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Galatians 3, 27. Uh, that is written actually in the letter. So if you didn't get it on the show, you can rewind it or re pull it back and, and write those down or whatever you'd like to do. They're also on my website too. So June 13, Sunday prayer letter, they saw a young man part four. Wednesday, Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The thought here I have is, in this verse, people get confused with another thing. That is the difference between signs, fruits, and gifts. Scripture is extremely clear on these three topics. The problem lies in the teacher or pastor who mixes these words up. Also included are many believers who spend little time in the Word of God. Then adding to this the multitude of believers who are not filled with the Holy Ghost, which is another subject. And in these, and, and in these there comes many problems of understanding the Word of Truth even to the point that some say that the gifts of the Spirit no longer exist. Wow. Not good. All right, we'll scroll down to the next part. Part 5 is for Thursday, Mark 16, verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. My thought here is right here tells us all where Jesus is at this moment. This is very important, and the reason why we all need to fully understand where Jesus is. Because the deceiver is telling people that this verse is not in the original or in the Bible, and that Jesus never went to where he said he went. All this type of talk is the setup for the end times and the one world situation that will soon be visible to all people. All right, we'll do the last part, part 6, for Friday. It'll be Mark 16, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So my thought here is this. Here we can see the action taken by the believers. We also need to understand that Jesus also said to wait for the promise of the Father, which he will send. This part also describes where they went, which is where Jesus told them to go. And we see also that we are not alone in our work of preaching and ministry. Lastly, we can, all, we can clearly see that signs follow the preaching of the gospel of Christ. Let me say that one more time. We can clearly see that signs follow. Get that? Follow. They don't lead, they follow. They're behind us. If you see signs and you're following, so a little side note here, if you're, if you're seeing signs in front of you, stop and turn around and go the other way because you're going the wrong direction. The signs are following. They're behind you. Uh, many Christians seek a sign to keep going, and that is, a, that is a lack of faith, a lack of belief, and a lack of understanding in the Word of God. So I'm going to say it one more time, this last sentence I have here. We can clearly see that signs follow the preaching of the gospel of Christ. So these scriptures are still active and alive. They are not dead, nor are they finished. Or in other words, they have not ended. So let's pray again. 
Lord Jesus, you are so wonderful to your bride. We love you. <laughs> Thank you for teaching us how to preach, and how to minister. You have made a clear way for all who believe. And you have shown us that if someone does not believe, that their future is not bright. Help us, Holy Spirit, to go everywhere and preach the gospel in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And my Sunday prayer letter is signed, Preacher, no, yeah, Preacher of Jesus. <laughs> Preacher of Jesus has my initials, JC, and below my initials, I have three verses. I'll read them to you. Matthew 28, 3, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Luke 24, 4, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. John 20, verse 12, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Amen and amen. Well, there you go, folks. This is my Sunday prayer letter. It was written Saturday, June 12, 2021 at 746 p.m. In Boulder, Colorado. It's written by John Shuck, street preacher, church builder, founding pastor and missionary. God bless you, my dear friend. I love you very much.